I've been living with the ARM-based Surface Pro 9 since about December 2022. Considering all the signs point to Microsoft going all in on Windows on ARM for their next Surface refresh, I figured now was a better time than any to provide an update as to how I feel about the machine about a year and a half later. As a recap of my initial review on the Surface Pro 9 with 5G, a few months in, I found it to be a great thin and light 2-in-1-esque computer. Its battery life rivaled my M1 Pro MacBook Pro with the Microsoft SQ3 inside being more than enough to handle the majority of day-to-day -day tasks I expected of a lower-powered everyday device. Add in the always stellar stylus support packed into Surface Pros, some nifty video call features, easily accessible SSD, and silent fanless design, and the only real gripe that hindered the package for my recommendation for most people was that $1,600 price tag. The only times when it really hitched was when using certain professional apps and games. In both cases, compatibility seemed to be at the heart of the issue. Because the professional apps I tried, mainly Adobe Creative Cloud, DaVinci Resolve, and Affinity Suite, hadn't been rebuilt specifically for Windows on ARM, the apps either didn't launch at all or experienced significant hits to performance. Meanwhile, a variety of games and emulators posted errors due to the SQ3's lackluster Vulkan support. Add in some weird web app behavior and kind of like the Surface Duo at launch, it was clear that there was something great at the center of the hardware that could easily be obscured by software for anyone who wanted to use the Surface Pro 9 as their dedicated work machine. Some of that still does ring true today, while well, just other aspects are now almost problem-free. To start to unpack all that a little bit, just let me start by saying that my primary use case for the Pro 9 has been as a thin and light travel laptop. Its exceptional battery life, quiet operation, and onboard 5G modem have made it perfect to stash in a bag and take on a road trip or to a coffee shop. Just this past week, I took it to a two-day conference and used it to take notes throughout. I started the first day with 100% battery and ended the second day with still 5% left, even with 5G enabled throughout the entire time. Quite literally, it's a ridiculously good machine for anyone who prizes battery life above all else and could also benefit from one of the best implementations of a touch display on the market. Although, its position as my travel computer also means I'm not using the Pro 9 for really intense tasks. The most active programs on my machine are Edge, Word, very light Excel, and occasionally OBS when I want to use it as a dedicated display for something else. Still, any time that I've had the random app or task to complete on the Pro 9, I haven't run into any unexpectedly sluggish performance, app compatibility issues, or any of the other gripes which frequented earlier iterations of Windows on ARM. In fact, with the abundance of updates since my last review, performance feels a bit snappier. Applications open a bit quicker, and the random odd behaviors with certain web apps like Google Maps have disappeared completely. From a general performance standpoint, the Surface Pro 9 feels a lot like the Surface Duo in that it had more than a few early quirks, but has almost completely smoothed out. With all that in mind, venturing outside my typical needs for this device is where you might find some issues. Performance for non-native apps has almost always been at least adequate for most of the apps that I've come across so far. However, the reality is that anyone working on ARM-based Windows computers is just likely to run into some sort of custom or legacy app that just doesn't jive well with a Qualcomm processor. Though, with regards to mainstream standard tools, performance has improved quite a bit over time. It's really just specific edge cases that could hold it back for a lot of people in random workplaces. For digital art and graphic design tools though, Clip Studio, Affinity, and Adobe apps all work quite well at this point with just certain caveats. Clip Studio and Affinity apps still aren't built natively for ARM, so while they function well, they might use more processing resources overall and make the Pro 9 a bit warm with sustained use. Meanwhile, Adobe's rebuilt Photoshop, Lightroom, Acrobat, and Fresco for use with Windows on ARM. Unlike during my initial review, that means all these apps can now be downloaded and run on the Pro 9 without any issue. 
As with all Adobe apps, there's bound to be an upper limit to the type of complex work you'd be able to do on a machine like this. But, especially if Illustrator ever gets a native app, the Pro 9 would make for a great device for anyone looking for fully featured Adobe apps on an efficient tablet with more features and flexibility than an iPad. Unfortunately, the one huge gap in the Pro 9's creative suite is still a reliable video editing tool. Premiere Pro won't install due to the lack of native app support, and DaVinci Resolve still gives an open GL error anytime I try to launch it. Blackmagic has at least posed interest in creating a native app targeting the new X Elite chip set to arrive on the next Surface Pro, but we'll have to wait to see what the performance looks like on that when it arrives, if it ever does. In general, if you're considering an ARM-based Surface Pro for a work machine without remoting into a larger computer, you're going to need to do more research than other folks to see if your specific workflow or specific application needs are compatible with Windows on ARM. A ton of work has been done so far to provide compatibility with many of the most popular apps out there, but there are still a ton of gaps that could crop up depending on the person. If Microsoft follows through with their current ARM-based ambitions, many more wrinkles will likely be smoothed out, even a year from now. But, you know, always buy a computer with what is currently on the market, not what it promises to offer in the future. So far, I've been providing a profile of the Surface Pro 9 as a device that was made for folks who prize efficiency above performance. It's honestly hard not to stress that folks should limit their performance expectations on a computer without a fan that's running a relatively niche operating system. Weirdly enough, gaming is kind of the exception to all that. With the past year of updates, gaming performance has gotten to a point just shy of my Steam Deck, with signs that future updates could increase performance even more, even without a hardware update. To be clear, this is a machine that still thrives on cloud gaming via its 5G connection or the types of lighter games that it also feel right at home at my base spec iNeo AM1. If your entire gaming library is built around games like Dave the Diver or Cult of Lamb, you're going to have a great time with this machine. It'll regularly play those lighter games at a smooth 30 to 60 frames per second with low to moderate details enabled. Heck, give the machine an even lighter game like Hollow Knight and you might even be able to experience the full 120 hertz the Pro 9's display has to offer. As a performance benchmark, all of this isn't terribly impressive. However, once you remember that it'll play all these games silently due to a lack of a fan and for more than a couple hours on a full charge, it looks a lot better than many of the other lightweight machines on the market using integrated graphics. The only real downside to choosing an ARM-based machine over those other machines is that the Xbox app still doesn't include PC Game Pass, just cloud gaming. Considering how many fantastic lightweight games are currently available on Game Pass, I'm really hoping this is something Microsoft fixes in the near future. Of course, none of my focus on lighter games means the Pro 9 can't handle going bigger. In my initial review, I showed off Control and Shadow of the Tomb Raider running at around 15 frames per second on low presets. Either by virtue of updates or me being just a bit wiser in choosing my low settings, those same games now do 20 to 30 FPS reliably while targeting 720p. Meanwhile, slightly older games like Sunset Overdrive and Titanfall 2 hit 30 plus FPS reliably. Depending on the game, I will occasionally experience a small hitch, but toggling motion blur or V-Sync in most games is enough to smooth things out. As it stands, the Pro 9 is more than capable of holding its own in the gaming arena, and that's only set to become truer for future Surface devices with newer processors. Unfortunately, there's a rather large asterisk next to me praising the Surface Pro 9 for its gaming performance, and that's compatibility. None of the games I've tested have specific builds for Windows on ARM. They're all running through Microsoft's x86 compatibility layers, which means that a decent amount of performance is still being thrown out. Any solution to an issue like this will either require significant investment from Microsoft to get developers to build for ARM, or for Windows on ARM to reach a critical mass of adoption amongst gamers. 
in conjunction with the performance hit of compatibility layers is also the general unevenness of graphics API support. OpenGL, OpenCL, and Vulkan compatibility tools have updated many times over the past year and brought support very far, but it still has a ways to go. For example, in my initial review, I reported that Celeste, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, Witcher 3, and Fallout 3 all refuse to load outright. Certain games, like Doom Eternal, still do report Vulkan issues, but now both Celeste and Persona 4 Arena Ultimax run quite well. Celeste, being a lighter game, runs perfectly, with no signs that it used to not run at all. Meanwhile, Persona 4 Arena still has some awkward slowdown in menus, but runs at a constant 40 plus FPS in battle at low to medium settings. Witcher 3 also loads just fine, albeit only if I select to run with DirectX 11. At sub 15 frames per second, it doesn't exactly run well, as expected for integrated graphics, but the fact that it now runs at all is a good sign for future chipsets. Unfortunately, I am still running into issues trying to load Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. They're both crashing on the initial loading screen for some reason. Considering Fallout 4 runs perfectly fine, this could be a sign that maybe the use of DirectX 9 or something about the specific game engines in those older games don't jive well with the SQ3. I haven't had any issues with some other DirectX 9 games from the same time period, like Bioshock, but it might be worthwhile to note that compatibility with a game might not be 100%, even if the chipset can technically handle the game. Ultimately, the Surface Pro 9 is one of those quirky gaming devices that is surprisingly capable if you're willing to use it on its own terms. That's equally true for emulation, by the way. As with a year ago, most systems run exceptionally well on the Pro 9. Both Dolphin and Aether SX2 have builds for Windows on ARM, making GameCube, Wii, and PS2 emulation fantastic on this machine. Likewise, PPSSPP has an ARM build that works exceptionally well. Emulators for less demanding systems like DSUME, MGBA, and RetroArch don't have ARM builds at the moment, but the SQ3 is more than performant enough to provide a smooth experience regardless. Major pain points, just as with my initial review, still seems to be 3DS and Wii U emulation. For 3DS, Citra loads into a game and then crashes soon after. It definitely seems like an emulator that doesn't quite know what to do to interface correctly with the SQ3 or Windows on ARM. Of course, Citra has also ceased development due to Nintendo's recent lawsuit against the Yuzu devs. If a Windows on ARM build ever surfaces, it'll likely be from an emulator that doesn't currently exist. But for right now, 3DS emulation just isn't available on this platform. Lastly, for Wii U, I'm still having the same problem where games load, the audio for the game runs just fine, but the video playback is disabled for some odd reason. Like Citra, this will likely be an emulator that either needs a dedicated Windows on ARM build or some sort of software update specifically targeting the SQ3. Altogether, the Surface Pro 9 with 5G is a fantastically portable machine that's great for light gaming and general productivity. Well, it's more than capable of pushing outside those boundaries. Users should expect to experience some oddities depending on the task they have in mind, which honestly is understandable when talking about a thin and light computer like this. The solid state of the Surface Pro 9 also reflects the mountain of progress that Windows on ARM, just in general, has undergone. Not too long ago, Windows on ARM machines had an abundance of compatibility issues for everyday use cases, with 64-bit apps being particularly difficult. Some of those issues still exist, don't get me wrong, but what lingers seems to be edge cases for specific types of users who should realistically be expected to do their research going in or get specialized computers. All of it has me excited for the future of Surface and Windows on ARM just in general. If compatibility continues to improve and Qualcomm follows through on their promises for the Snapdragon X Elite and beyond, we could be fast approaching a time when we get a slim, quiet Surface Pro or Surface Studio that can rival the ARM-based MacBook I used to edit videos on this channel 
both performance and battery life. Those are my thoughts though. I'd love to know yours. Have you purchased an ARM-based Windows machine in the past and have thoughts of your own? Or are you currently considering either a Surface Pro 9 or one of those fancy dev machines and want to know more? Let me know down in the comments. As always, if this video was helpful or informative, go ahead and give it a like to let me know, and then get subscribed for more Windows on ARM videos in the very near future. That's gonna be all for this video though. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. I really do appreciate y'all and hope you're having a wonderful day. But until next time, catch you later.